So if you've been looking to get smart home gadgets for your home, you've probably considered getting thermostats, locks, smart plugs, as well as lights, but have you considered thinking about getting some smart sensors? Now, I'll be honest with you, smart home sensors are generally quite limited, especially for Apple Home. There is a lot of progress that can be made in the sensor portion of smart home devices, as my overall experience with the D-Link Omna Eve Room or Eve uh, suite of sensors and the iHome Home Sensor haven't been that great. Apple also needs to step up their game as the Apple Home app really isn't designed to handle sensor data well or at all. The standout smart home sensor out of this entire grouping is actually the Eve Home because it sheds some light on poor air quality in my office. I'll elaborate on that in a minute. So in the next few minutes, Monty and I, this little schnoodle, um, we are going to help you figure out what smart home sensors exactly are as well as tell you which ones to maybe perhaps buy and some of the other ones that maybe you should stay away from. And Ultimately, with Smart Home Reviews A, we do all this to answer the question, how do I get the most out of my home? Um, and so that kind of translates to these review videos. Now, from my perspective, sensors fall into three categories. The first being motion-based sensors, the second being open-closed sensors, and the last one being environmental sensors. Now, motion-based sensors, such as the D-Link Omni and Eve Motion, will tell you, well, if motion has been detected. These sensors have varying cones of sensitivity, with the D-Link being smart enough to allow you to pick which cog quadrants in its field of view to detect motion in. The Apple Home app allows you to trigger an automation with these motion sensors, which is pretty handy. Now the second group, the open and closed sensors are very binary. The Eve door sensor will tell you, well, if the thing is open or closed. Now, I personally do not know where I would use this open and closed sensor, but I'm about to become a father, so I guess making sure that certain doors and closets are closed or knowing if they're closed might be useful. Like motion-based sensors, you can trigger automations with these types of smart home gadgets. Now the third group of sensors are environmental sensors. So your Eve room, your Eve outdoor, your iHome home <laughs> sensor. You know, they'll me measure temperature, humidity, air pressure. And so there's a lot of, you know, environmental things that you can access remotely, but ultimately I'm not quite sure how useful that is, you know, accessing that information remotely. One of the things that Apple's kind of missing with the Apple Home app and their automations is the inability to trigger like a smart plug connected to a dehumidifier uh, to your Eve room sensor, right? So if the humidity goes too high, I want it to just start going. Um, well, I guess that feature would probably be built into the uh, <laughs> dehumidifier or, you know, if the temperature is too cold and I only want to warm up one room, um, I want to be able to use that temperature to trigger an automation and the Apple Home app doesn't quite do that just yet. I was hoping that Apple would build this level of automation into the uh, iOS 11 home app, but they didn't. So I guess we'll have to wait another year. So what home sensors have I found to be fairly useless? For me personally, the Eve outdoor sensor seems like a, seems like a waste of money, I'll say. The sensor provides readings for air pressure, humidity, and temperature. Now, out of the three, the only one that I'm personally concerned about is the temperature. So having the Eve outdoor sensor beside my $7 outdoor thermometer is actually quite redundant. Humidity to me is important, but humidity inside my house is important so that, you know, the wood doesn't start cracking and stuff. When it's outside, I, it has almost no bearing in terms of what I do outside. The same thing with air pressure. So there are two, two out of three things for the Eve outdoor outdoor sensor are kind of useless to me. And the other problem with these remote sensors is that the only time that I'm interested in the temperature that's outside is when I'm about to leave my home, which means I have to go get my jacket and that's kind of where the, the thermometer is. So, you know, it's way quicker to peek outside to look at the $7 thermometer I have outside than it is to open up my app, wait for the outdoor sensor to sync, and then, you know, make my decisions based on that data. And the other thing that kind of boggles my mind is that if I'm, you know, in my office, why do I need to remotely check the temperature at my home? You know, like I just, I can think of reasons, but there won't be that many reasons for me to actually, the reasons aren't good enough for me to actually go out of my way to spend the $60 on the sensor just so that I know that information. Another thing that kind of bothers me about these smart home sensors is the cost. You know, to modernize your home, you know, make everything kind of semi-intelligent takes a quite a bit of money. And 
you know, take this Eve door sensor for example. Is it really worth $40 to know if a door is open or not? I'm sure that we can reason why we would need this, but you know, $40 is a lot of money to know how many times that this door has closed or opened. Now, which sensor has been the most useful? The Eve room sensor has been incredibly enlightening for me in terms of air quality. I've been using the room sensor for several months now in my office, and the first few days were actually quite eye-opening. Apparently, my home office had extremely bad air quality and I tried opening the window, which improved the air quality slightly, but the biggest culprit in the office was the printer. The moment I turned it off, the air quality in my office was great. And to me, that was something I did not know, so it was worth the, uh, holy crap, this thing's $100? <laughs> was it worth $100? Maybe. Um, but do I feel any better working in my basement? You know, the answer is no, I don't feel like I'm healthier working in my basement. Maybe I'll live an extra three weeks uh, because of it, but you know, neat, good to know, but is it worth $100? I don't know, I'll let you guys decide on that. I will add that the thing with the most effect on my physical being is actually smart home colored lighting. That stuff is pure awesome, so do check out that video if uh, you need to learn more about smart home lighting. Um, if this is the first time you watch one of my smart home reviews, uh, do subscribe to the channel. This is a brand new channel. It's only been, at the time of this video, been around for about six weeks. So I am producing as much content as I possibly can. Uh, so it's gonna get pretty awesome pretty quick here. Um, if you have questions or comments, leave them down there. This is Monty the Ho, I'm Aaron the Ho, and we're reviewers for Smart Home Reviews A. Yes, he's wearing a tie.